Hello, my name is Noah Green, and welcome to our first video discussing the migration patterns of the eastern North American monarch butterfly. As I'm sure many of you know, during the spring and summer, monarch butterflies inhabit the majority of the United States and southern Canada. What you may not know is there's two distinct populations of these butterflies, the eastern and western North American monarchs. The dividing line of these two populations of monarchs is the Rocky Mountains, with the western population residing on the west of the Rocky Mountains and the eastern population residing on the east during the spring and summer. The western population is much smaller and undergoes a more truncated migration compared to the eastern population. Therefore, we will be concentrating on the eastern population for the majority of this module. In a good year during the summer months, nearly half a billion eastern monarch butterflies reside in the North northern United States and southern Canada. In mid-September, these butterflies begin a journey to their summer from their summer residence to their overwintering grounds in Mexico, a migration of nearly 2,500 miles for some of these butterflies. They complete this migration in less than two months while migrating only during the day. One of the most fascinating aspects of this story is that it is a multi-generational migration from start to finish, with, my, with butterflies undergoing massive physiological changes within generations as well as between them. The first generation in this migration are those who start in the northern United States and southern Canada and fly all the way to Mexico in a single generation. These butterflies can live up to nine months compared to just a few weeks for butterflies during mating season. These butterflies undergo what is known as reproductive diapause, meaning they will not mate or reproduce during this migration. This period free of mating is one of the reasons they are able to live as long as they do. While this expedition is incredible in itself, it gets even more incredible once they reach their overwintering grounds. The vast majority of monarchs that make this trip end up in one of 12 main sites within a 300 square mile section of the mountains of central Mexico just west of Mexico City. These sites are about two miles high in elevation and contain mostly pine forest. These sites were discovered in the winter of 1975, and once they were identified, a biologist named Fred Urquhart was able to tag butterflies in the U.S. and find butterflies from all over the eastern U.S. in Mexico during the winter. Therefore, he suggested that these sites were not just the overwintering location for some monarchs, but for the entire eastern population. Once the weather warms and the day length begins to increase in the spring, these butterflies undergo a massive reproductive event in Mexico, and the females begin their migra migration back north to lay their eggs on milkweed plants in the southern United States and northern Mexico. Keep in mind that these are the same generation of butterflies that migrated all the way south to Mexico and is now undergoing the first leg of their journey back north. Once these females have laid their eggs and finally give in and shuffle off this mortal coil, the next generation of butterflies hatch, eat, pupate, and then breed in the southern United States during the early spring. Once they have mated, they fly far part of the way back north and lay their eggs in the middle of the country. The next generation once again hatches, eats milkweed, pupates, and mates, and then flies the rest of the way back to their summer living quarters up north where they reproduce and feed until it's time to move south once more. This migration is one of the wonders of the natural world, and scientists are still not absolutely clear on the genetics behind this multi-generational trip covering a large portion of North America. Unfortunately, there is a number of eastern monarchs that make this migration is steadily decreasing during the past 20 years. In 1997, it was estimated that there was close to 1 billion butterflies in the overwintering grounds in Mexico. That number has dropped to a staggering 50 million in 2013. Researchers have hypothesized that this massive decrease in monarch numbers is due to several human-related factors. These include deforestation of their overwintering grounds in the mountains of Mexico, the eradication of milkweed plants in the U.S. through the use of herbicides, as well as climate change. Therefore, if we want our children to be able to experience these incredible animals, it is time to start making a change in our emissions, logging, and farming practices to preserve monarchs for generations to come. I hope you have enjoyed this video and please tune in to the next video about the remarkable biology behind this epic quest of the monarchs.